I must warn you, there are spoilers ahead, so be cautious and stay alert. The story follows the life of a high school senior named Mike O'Donnell in 1989, who seemingly has it all. He's a star athlete with a bright future ahead, a confident and charming personality, and a beautiful girlfriend named Scarlett who informs him of her pregnancy just before his big game. In a split-second decision, Mike decides to give up everything and be with her and the baby. Fast forward to the present, Mike is staying with his wealthy high school friend named Ned, after being kicked out of the house by Scarlett. While having breakfast, he becomes visibly annoyed by Ned's loud munching on Cap'n Crunch. On top of that, after 16 years of hard work, he's about to be promoted to regional sales manager. But unfortunately, the promotion goes to Wendy, who has only been with the company for two months. Mike's boss tells him he's too valuable to be promoted as an excuse. To make matters worse, Mike returns to his high school and reminisces about his lost basketball awards and the life he could have had. However, things take a mystical turn when a janitor appears out of nowhere and speaks to Mike like he knows him very well. The janitor asks Mike if he had the chance to do it all over again, would he? Mike answers, yes, I would. But just as his daughter Maggie arrives, the janitor disappears into thin air. After spending some quality time with his children, Alex and Maggie, Mike discovers that Maggie has been accepted to Georgetown College. He inquires about Alex's basketball practices, but the disinterest on Alex's face is quite evident. Despite Mike's efforts, his kids seem uninterested in him, and to make matters worse, Scarlett destroys Mike's belongings in the backyard. Their divorce is only two weeks away, and Scarlett accuses Mike of making excuses his whole life, including how he could have had a better life if he hadn't chased after her and taken the scholarship. This pattern seems to repeat in Mike's life, and he hits rock bottom. On his way to Ned's house, his radio starts malfunctioning, and a massive storm is brewing. He sees the mysterious janitor standing on a railing, but when his truck drives by, the janitor disappears again. As he checks the water, he sees a water spout in his 17-year-old self. He falls in and wakes up the next morning at Ned's place, only to discover that he's young again. Ned doesn't recognize him and even attacks him with an axe during their Star Wars-themed battle until he sees Mike's photo from his high school days and realizes that it's him. Although Ned tries to understand what happened to Mike through his comics, he is unable to. Mike is certain that it was the janitor who caused all of this and decides to look for him at the school. It is discovered that the only janitor at the school is a woman, and Mike follows a puddle she has left, leading him to the basketball court. He interprets that the janitor is his spiritual guide and wants him to relive his senior year. Back at Ned's house, Ned initially refuses to help but later poses as Mike's father to enroll him in school. Mike dresses up in 80s fashion with the help of Ned, but his first day is not as perfect as he had hoped. During basketball practice, he impresses the coach with his skills and finds out that Coach Murphy is still teaching PE at the school. Ned asks Mike to get in trouble so that he can meet the attractive principal, Jane. After the call, Mike helps his son Alex out of a difficult situation and they bond over lunch. Alex gives him the inside scoop on everything at school, from the hottest girl to the biggest bully. In the meantime, Scarlett calls Mike about their pending divorce, which he had forgotten about, and they reschedule. He discovers that Maggie's boyfriend is the same person who once taped Alex to the toilet, leaving Mike stunned by his lack of knowledge about his own children. In a fit of rage, he summons Stan over to Alex and reprimands him for being a bully. Mike decides to take action by calling Stan's parents, but the cafeteria erupts in laughter at his old school approach. Undeterred, Mike shares the reason for Stan's bullying tendencies while juggling a basketball. He has a small penis. Realizing his shortcomings as a father, Mike confides in Ned that his son has been bullied for the past year and his daughter is dating a jerk. He believes that he was sent back to his teenage years to set his children on the right path. He visits Alex, impressed with his basketball skills, and promises to get him on the team. Scarlett arrives after a happy hour and is amazed by how young Mike looks, unaware that he is actually her husband. Meanwhile, Mike finds himself in a health class where Stan takes a handful of condoms. He delivers a heartfelt speech about the importance of love and marriage before engaging in an embarrassing yet wholesome moment. After Mike's speech on safe coupling, Stan proudly announces that he now has enough Durex condoms for the whole weekend. This leads Mike to attack him, but Stan ends up beating him up, making him the laughing stock of the school. Meanwhile, Ned successfully flirts with Jane, the principal, but she rejects his advances. Later, Mike visits Scarlett and offers to help rebuild her backyard, flirting with her in the process. Scarlett refuses his advances, but still accepts his offer for help. 
as they work on the garden, Mike keeps an eye on Scarlett and trains Alex for the basketball team's tryouts. As for Ned, he continues to pursue Jane while Alex makes the basketball team and the backyard makeover is complete. Scarlett informs Mike that she has a date and needs to get ready. He compliments her dancing abilities, which could be seen as inappropriate. When Scarlett performs a dance, Mike joins in and they both connect over the music from their wedding. Despite Scarlett's resistance to his advances, Mike persists. Unfortunately, their moment is interrupted when Alex catches them. Shortly after, Scarlett's date arrives and hands Mike the divorce papers. Meanwhile, Stan picks up Maggie for a party, prompting Mike and Alex to attend to ensure her safety. While there, Mike encourages Alex to talk to his crush, Nicole, and gives a speech to some girls about self-respect. He receives a response that he doesn't need to show them respect, and one of the girls goes even further to say he doesn't have to remember her name. Alex initiates a conversation with Nicole by comparing her to his deceased dog, but brushes off the uncomfortable situation as nerves while his pants catch fire, and he experiences embarrassment. Mike eventually reaches Maggie and convinces her that Stan is not a suitable partner for her, and she reveals that she plans to live with him after finishing community college instead of attending Georgetown. Mike assumes a fatherly tone and forbids her from seeing Stan, prompting her to walk away after questioning his authority. Meanwhile, Alex arrives amidst smoke after the incident with his pants, and the team is in the middle of an important game where Mike chooses Alex over Stan for the winning shot, causing Stan to become enraged. After winning the game, Alex is congratulated by Nicole in an awkward yet friendly exchange. Additionally, Ned is still searching for Jane at school. The boy asked a girl out on a date, but she said no. He then offered to buy laptops for everyone at school if she changed her mind. She agreed, but only if he stopped being inappropriate and giving gifts. Another boy threw a party, and the girl he liked was sad because her boyfriend broke up with her. He comforted her and told her she would find someone special one day. At the party, two other people hit it off and spoke in a made-up language. The girl who said no to the first boy refused to take him back, as she found someone else. Mike attempted to punch Stan, but he was unsuccessful, leading to Stan knocking him out. When Mike regains consciousness, he is babbling nonsensically while resting on Maggie's lap. Maggie realizes that Mike did not want her to be with Stan because he wanted her to be with him instead. To distract Mike, she begins to play a game where she is a lion and he is a gazelle. Mike tries to explain that he is in love with someone else, but he is unable to articulate his feelings when questioned by Maggie. Jane and Ned's dinner appears to be ending on a positive note, but it is disrupted by a horde of high school students in Ned's home. Scarlett shows up at the gathering, looking for Alex. Mike shares the news of Alex and Nicole's relationship with Scarlett. When Jane and Ned arrive, Scarlett takes matters into her own hands and convinces everyone to leave. Maggie notices Mike flirting with her mother and witnesses him kissing Scarlett, causing her to slap him. In an attempt to reconcile, Mike chases after Scarlett and claims that he is the true father of their children. Scarlett insults Mike by calling him a weirdo and telling him to stay away from her. Soon after, Maggie and her friends arrive and slap him for behaving inappropriately. Once everyone has departed, Jane informs Mike that she cannot meet with her students' parents. Mike apologizes to Ned and they exchange slaps, considering themselves even. The next morning, they hop into the Nedmobile to rush to court, as Mike's appearance is due in 22 minutes. Despite making a mockery of themselves, Scarlett intervenes and requests that Mike read a letter he claims to have from her husband. The letter tells a long story about losing his way and confesses his love for Scarlett, which resonates with her. Mike leaves the letter behind and departs. Scarlett postpones the divorce and reads the address on the letter, which leads her to the courtroom. She begins to question Mike's identity when she looks at her high school album from 1989 and sees that the Mike from then looks exactly the same as the Mike from now. Hearing Mike's scholarship game, a scout is present, just as in 1989. Scarlett attends the game with Maggie to watch Mike play. Ned also appears at the game to request another chance with Jane, who rejects him, stating that she cannot be seen with her student's parents. However, Ned claims that he wears an invisibility cloak, which intrigues Jane, leading her to agree to further romantic encounters. Before the game commences, Mike demonstrates a move from his past to Scarlet, which triggers a realization that he is her husband. As before, Mike pauses with the ball in his hands. When he sees Scarlet depart, he abandons the ball and pursues her, expressing his desire to be with her once again and acknowledging that she is the best decision he has ever made. Mike apologizes to Scarlet for his past mistakes and explains his desire to spend the remainder of his life with her. The couple reconciles, and the story concludes. Thank you for watching, and subscribe to see more videos like this.